when we're looking at the market, when we're looking at the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, um, the, the the thing that comes to my mind right now is that you're consolidating essentially at highs. We're consolidating at a massive, massive level. And when we look at the Nasdaq, and you're right there at that 17k marker. Despite what's happening with the dollar, despite what's happening with some of the news over the weekend, you know, strength still remains. And that's what's going to be the point of this video today is to understand what's really happening in the market and some news that came out around the Fed as well. So this morning, early on, this is the four hour chart. You came down at like. 2 a.m. Central, you touched 16.8 off of the London Open, you bounced immediately back into 17K, and again, we're just range bound here. You go over to ES and you look at something like what's happening with SPY, uh, again, maybe not as clean of a chart, but you're still range bound here, but SPY is ranging from local highs or 52-week highs uh, to lows of around 47.80. I would argue SPY is stronger, okay? Kind of a different tone from the, the rest of the year. Now, I will also say today, Fed Waller came out and said the U.S. is within striking distance of its inflation goal. Okay, this is worth mentioning. This does not mean that they're going to do it ASAP. Okay, I want to make that really clear. The U.S. is within striking distance of the Federal Reserve's 2% inflation goal, but the central bank should not rush to cut its benchmark interest rate until it's clear lower inflation will be sustained. So these are all very big bullet points we need to be paying very close attention to as we go into the next few days and weeks. So there was a few concerns going into the beginning of this week based on what some of the Fed members were saying over the weekend, you know, essentially saying that we're nowhere near our target or not near our target yet, right? We still have a full percent to go. We've also seen inflation kind of start to slow since the beginning of the year very important things to consider. One thing that you should keep on the you know, tippity top of your calendars is January 31st, the next Fed decision, rate decision and Fed meeting. Very, very big. It's important to know you will not have a February rate decision. The next one will be in March. So I do put a lot of emphasis and importance on this next meeting. Again, personal opinion. So again, we want to see the Fed stance and how they approach it, but we have about two weeks, give or take until then. So we have a lot of information to process. In the meantime, we're about to cover what's happening with the dollar and yields, and those continue to push up. But the thing that I you know, said in the beginning of the video is resilience. And despite the dollar rising, which has been kind of a sell signal over the past few months, despite the yields rising, the market has sustained its strengths. Now, what I will say, what I will say is you do have earnings starting next week. Now you have bank earnings this week, you know, kicking off like the beginning of earnings season, but next week you have Tesla and Netflix and a few other tech names, and then it rolls into the beginning of February, right? So we're gonna be knocking out a bulk of the Magnificent Seven over the next three weeks when it comes to earnings. And there is a lot of impact that's gonna happen there. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty important and pretty valid. So again, when we look at this, it's interesting. If you can continue to consolidate at highs going into earnings, and with the, you know, the rate decision coming up, which we anticipate another pause and probably another statement with based on what the Fed has said that you're pushing closer to rate cuts, whether you believe it or not, guess what? This has a lot of capabilities to push us into new highs, but I do urge a lot of caution based on what's happening with the dollar and yields. Let's talk about that. So when we look at the dollar again, the dollar came right to our target today of the 200 SMA. We said if you were ranging in this box as you broke out of it yesterday, Again, you break out of it, you push into the target. Surprise, surprise. So that's where we're at right now. You're somewhat getting rejected now. Now, what I will say is I do expect a rejection from this. I never expect to hit a target and then just you know go straight through it to the moon, right? I usually expect some sort of rejection. Now, the reaction from that rejection will be very important. If we get a small you know rejection and then we push right through it, that's very concerning. and would point to risk off, in my opinion, okay? Now, what I will say, looking at this movement and looking at the movement today on the market, I think the you know the one outlier, the one thing that carried us today were semiconductors. I can show you SMH, the semiconductor ETF, pushing very close in all time highs. You actually had an all time high push right there. SOXX, right? You know, really recovering, bull flag, trying to break out. When you combine this with AMD, Nvidia, right? You know, these have been carrying the market. No, it's not a surprise. Okay, so with the action from you know today and then over the past few you know past week or two. You know, AMD and NVIDIA have been some of the strongest names out there. But when we point to some of the other names that have been strong, like Microsoft, for example, you know, you, you had a really nice gap up to 394 and you came back under previous 52 week highs. Now, again, if you remount this level around 390.7, you look great. But I have to say, a lot of the strength today was dominated by semiconductors. And I never want to see just one area of the market holding strength. Okay. That's one thing I always like want to put out there. 
if I'm seeing the market retain strength, then I at least want to see maybe something like Dow holding a lot of, you know, a lot of that love, right? XLI, right? XLI has been coming down and it's honestly shocking that XLI is not down more based on what's happening with Boeing. XLY, still not the greatest, but possibly putting in a higher low. XLF banks, which are reporting right now, kind of on the downside. Decent candle on the day or the four hour, but again, on the downside here. So I can just go down the laundry list of names, tech, you know, tech obviously <laughs> doing the best, right? So tech and semiconductors are holding on, okay? That is worth mentioning. And again, I go down to yields and I can show you here, yields, again, breaking out of that range, similar to what, you know, the DXY looks like. You're just tracking there, breaking out, pushing up, and you're above the 200, pretty strong here. So these are definitely things you got to be watching out for. Again, you know, yields dropping, in my opinion, were one of the biggest catalysts going in from November to December for all that upside, right? We talked about what happened with IWM and all the love we saw there. Well, IWM still coming down, right? We look at the daily here on the, you know, still not great. You're breaking back below key levels. You're pushing down. You have the 200 weekly SMA right here at 188. I would anticipate that we're going to test the 200 SMA very soon on IWM. It's highly likely, right? So again, when I look at these, it's not super surprising where we're at, right? Uh, and again, it leads me to have caution, right? And again, I've been one of the biggest bulls out there, but when the DXY and the yields are doing this, I have to urge caution above all else, okay? Now, what I will say before we get out of here, you know, when you're looking at NASDAQ is to be really, I, again, okay, let me clarify really quick, okay? Above 16.8, I am bullish. Below 16.6, I'm pretty bearish. In this range here, 16.8 to 16.6, it's almost like no man's land. I think you have to be very careful in this range, okay? Because if we start to break back down below 16.6, it's going to be a strong move. Not the strongest, but it's going to be an easier trade to the downside, okay? I think sellers lose a lot. If you you know, get into this range, it can go back and forth. We've already seen how that's been established via a lot of these wicks here, but we continue to see a lot of buyers show up at that 16, eight level. So these are all things that you need to be paying very close attention to. Okay. Very, very close attention to. And then when we look at some of the action throughout the day is, you know, you still made higher lows all day long, you know, all day long, you're making these higher lows. So that is another good look there. So despite my worries and concerns, I still look at the NASDAQ and I'm like, man, there's a lot of resilience here. There's a lot of strength. And it's shown that it wants to keep on going. And if you get any sort of good news, this thing might just explode. So again, you have to keep your head on a swivel here. You have to stay kind of balanced. But again, I'm being a little bit patient here. I'm waiting for my opportunity. And I'm letting a little bit more news start to come in as well. Now, sometimes you guys love when I talk about patience, because usually when I get really patient, great you know plays start to show themselves, right? But I'm going to say here, I don't like to say the word unsure because if I'm unsure, then I probably shouldn't be making too many videos. But this is one of those moments, in my opinion, where, you know, there's a lot of indecision here, especially with what's happening with the dollar in comparison to the Nasdaq. The fact that the Nasdaq is holding up like this is incredibly, incredibly strong. OK, that's something that you need to keep on the top of your list. It's like really interesting how this is moving here. Now, what I will say is you're in an interesting position as well to where you've had very weak stocks and you've had pretty strong names. For instance, this past week, the best trade that I had was Microsoft long Boeing short, meaning I just like, I wanted to short a very weak name to protect any kind of whipsaw that we would see in the market. Meaning I liked Microsoft, it was very strong, I was getting a lot of the upside opportunity and the market was kind of seesawing back and forth. So what I did is I went a little bit small on the position to the downside on Boeing, but I knew Boeing was very weak. And if we had any downside, it would outperform Microsoft to the downside. But if we had any upside, I knew Microsoft, since it was sitting at all-time highs and mounting previous highs, I'd get more upside than Boeing would, right? So that's how I kind of approach this type of method and approach this type of market. I try to go out via two ways, right? I, I try not to go too heavy, but I also try to protect myself no matter what I'm doing. But when you get into markets like this where you're just not as sure, Right. And even me, look, someone that looks at this all day long, there's times where I'm just not that sure. I'm just not that confident. And I have to be able to recognize and be honest with myself and say, hey, maybe I should take a step back. Maybe I should reduce my risk. And maybe I should just wait for one of those great trades to show themselves. You know, a month ago, we were talking about Netflix, AVGO, LRCX. You know, fast forward to now, we had Microsoft, we had Boeing drop $20 over 24 hours of trading. So those are just things to show you that you're not, you know, you, I know everyone's afraid I'm going to miss the next play. 
but I promise you there's one thing that's always out there. It's another play. So really quickly, let's just go over a few names. Now I'm going to start with the weak ones and I'll go into the names that are stronger. Number one, Tesla. So Tesla was a very interesting name here. Uh, again, it was one of those things that you could either day trade or you, you know, it, it, it was, it was kind of, I'm not gonna lie, it was tough today, right? So Tesla, I am inherently very weak on this name. I'm gonna be really clear about this. If you don't know, if you didn't look at Elon Musk comments, um, it was kind of the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. He essentially said, and I'm not saying FUD, this is literally what Elon Musk said. He said, if since he doesn't even have 25% control of his company, Tesla, because he doesn't own 25% worth of shares anymore because he sold some of those, why would he want to further the AI growth? And he's publicly said that Tesla is an AI company. This is, I, I agree, this is a crazy, crazy statement. Yes. So Tesla, I am looking for potential downside here. I want to see downside, right? It's inherently weak compared to the rest of the market. What I want to see though, you have two 200 SMAs here. Your 200 SMA on the weekly and then 200 SMA on the daily. Okay, but you are in between both of these, right? Boom, you're in between both of those. This is scary territory to trade. The trade that you should be looking for, or that I should be looking for, right, is a break retest of the 200 SMA and then a push to the downside. You did hit our target of 212, but I do believe that it could come down to 206 and maybe even down past 200. I'm being totally honest. The statements that if, unless Musk goes back on what he said, that is the most bearish thing that I've ever heard for a company in my entire life. A CEO that says they do not want to further the growth of their company because they don't own enough shares. I genuinely have no idea how you could be bullish on the stock. Personal opinion. Again, this could bounce, but I think you have to wait for the confirmation below the 200 SMA or 200 weekly SMA. Okay, again, you can zoom out. You can see some of these levels. You can go way back. Um, again, when you get below the 200 SMA on the weekly, uh, generally terrible things do happen. You broke it here. You went from literally 163 down to 102 in a matter of three weeks. Um, so yeah, definitely keep it on your radar. But I will say your most indecisive trading is in between these two. When you get above the 200 SMA on the weekly in between the daily. So this is a no trade zone for me. Again, you want to be very, very careful until you break below. So again, personal opinion, what I'd be looking for there. And again, you're kind of breaking structure and trend. Uh, next up Boeing. I know a lot of guys are just kind of questions on it. Um, so I'm just going to be really clear here. Like, obviously I, I made my money on Boeing guys. Like I'm going to be totally honest. Like I made my money. Okay. Totally honest with you guys. Uh, your next target is like 195. That's it though. Like I, I honestly couldn't give you too much else. Maybe 177. Like, but besides that, I'm going to be totally like, totally honest. Like, I don't know what to tell you here on Boeing. Like this thing is just falling apart. Um, very weak. Congratulations. You made money. Happy for you. Um, next up, let's go into Netflix. Very interesting. Another weak name. Really interesting here. What's happening. Okay. So Netflix, you might actually get a juicy setup here. Now I have no idea why they started to drop beyond my understanding. Okay. They have earnings, not this week, but next week. Okay. Uh, and I do like the potential downside. If you can get a retest back into, you know, 485 and start selling off. I love it. So you want to see that rejection of 485, and then hopefully you can't break back over. Break right over, you stop out, the end, right? Uh, but yeah, the 485 has been a massive, massive level. You can go all the way back. Again, it was a level we broke above and made a lot of money to the upside. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm watching for there. Now, again, strong names, what you want to see there. NVIDIA, I mentioned if you get above 551, Jay also mentioned this quite a bit, you're going to break and get some continuation. You ended up moving like another $16. Kind of crazy, right? Here in the after hours, you're basically <laughs> back at highs. Pretty incredible. Okay. Uh, yeah, Nvidia, like all you're looking for again, same trend, just mount previous highs, good to go. I mean, that's as much as I can say. You can't really do too much charting here. Be careful though. Yeah, I'd probably look at some other names. AVGO is really interesting. You're finally getting some love. Now we talked about that fill back into like, I think, uh, 1110, uh, but I still like it. If AVGO can start getting like back above, like, I mean, you're going to be kind of choppy in this range. I'm not going to lie to you. So what I'd be looking for is like a test into roughly right here until like 1140 potentially um again it's not the cleanest area it's not the most illiquid but if av if if you have nvidia you have amd all doing their things here expect good things to happen so what i'd be looking for is a mount above uh, 1115 or 1120 and then a push back up that's what i'd be trying to look for that poc here on your vpvr that'd be your best friend and what i'd be watching uh, Apple, super interesting behavior here. Now, what I talked about is you wanted to see that hold of 185.5. You did not, you obviously gapped down. You gapped actually below 183 and you came back down to the 200 SMA. So if you shorted it, congratulations, made 
a little bit there. What you're looking for in Apple now? If, as long as you stay above 183, you look good. Okay, it's really simple. I think this is one of the easier charts right now. Above 183, you're bullish. Below that, don't touch it or short it to the 200 SMA. But other than that, can't really do too much until you start mounting back above 185. You can try to go back to that range, try to get the gap fill. Not super interested in that. Gonna let you know right now. Microsoft, again, you're looking for that mount of hopefully 390.7. If you mount above that, you have room to push back into highs. And I definitely think this could still get like a test of the $400 range. Someone commented on the video today, it was like, Tyler, your target's still 400. Um, I'm going to be totally honest, like when a trade for me gets up like 50, 60%, I start to take profits 90% of the time. Uh, so Microsoft gapped up to like 394 today. I was exiting most of my position guys. Um, just cause I have a target. And again, I will say this too, having a target while you're at all time highs. Um, I'm going to tell you even for myself, those are my least likely to succeed like options and i say this all the time having a target is so arbitrary when you're in all time high territory because you're really just making guesses like that's you have no data to go back on especially if you're looking at technicals so um yeah be really careful with that anyone that gives you a like confirmed target at all-time high um, they might be doing drugs and i don't recommend anyone do drugs when you're trading stock again when you look at equities you can even see like there's not a lot of stuff that i like right it's a lot of back and forth it's some names are great some names look terrible you're going into earnings i think this is just an area that might be setting some people up to fail. And again, for myself, I'm just trying to slow down here. You know, I don't want to go crazy. I want to be pretty patient here, get my day trades, get in, get out, and not do nothing crazy. So I can't really give too many big opinions on like day trade setups here or even swing setups just because it looks so iffy. Um, and again, like I said, if I'm not confident, I don't want to push stuff on you guys. So I want, whenever you hear me talk about a play, I want you to know that I'm confident in that play. I have a strong feeling about it. I, I actually feel very good about it. I have some stuff to back up why I feel that way, right? I never just want to push something out there just to get a click or to get you to come back the next day, right? So again, have a good one, traders. See you guys tomorrow. Best of luck trading.